Hi and welcome to TechNot. A few weeks ago I got a message on Facebook asking us to make a video on Exchange. So we decided to do it. So what is Exchange? Exchange is Microsoft's server software powering emails, calendars and contacts mostly in the workplace. It was first released to the public in 1996 with Exchange 4.0 the current version is Exchange 2013. Before we go any further, there's a couple of things that we need set up before we can continue. For instance, you will need an external domain name to route your emails. For instance, technot.se. You will also need an Active Directory server set up. If you don't have one, check out our other videos. We have a link in the descriptions where we set it up on the HP microserver, but it should work on pretty much any platform. And also, you will need a server to run the Exchange platform which we'll go into in a bit more detail. We will be following Microsoft's recommendation for setting up our server. You will need an x64 processor. To host both the client access role and mailbox roles on the same server, you will need 8 gigabytes of RAM, and also you will need at least 31 gigabytes of storage. The server that you will be installing Exchange on will need to run at least server 2008 R2, but of course server 2012 and the R2 version of that is also supported. So here we are on our Exchange server. Oops, server manager started in the background. Uh, no worries there. As you can see, we've given it 8 gigs of RAM. It's a 64-bit processor, of course. Uh, it's been joined to my domain, kivi.local, and it's got the name kivi ex01. I've given the server a static IP address as well, as there will be some routing going on, and I don't want the DHCP to handle that. So, ready to move on. So before we can actually start the Exchange Setup Guide, there are quite a lot of things that we need to do to prepare the server and our Active Directory domain for Exchange. First thing we're going to do is fire up PowerShell. I will be copying all the commands from my other screen, but they will all be available in the video description. We'll start by installing the remote server administration tools for Active Directory. Once that installation has been completed, we're going to go ahead and install a whole bunch of other Exchange features. As you can see, this is not a command that, that you'll remember easily. Basically, this will install all the other features that Exchange will need. The installation has now completed, and as you can see, a restart is required. So, we're going to go ahead and do that. Just type in restart computer press enter. The server has now been restarted and I've downloaded some additional prerequisites. So we're gonna go ahead and install them. You'll find the download links in the video description. So first up is Microsoft Unified Communications Managed API 4.0. So, I'm going to go ahead and install that, accept the license terms, and click install. Once that installation is completed, I'm just going to go ahead and finish it off, and start off with the filter pack. Shouldn't have paused the recording, that was very fast, so we're going to go ahead and install the filter pack service pack. And they're completed very quickly as well. As you can see, I've now mounted the Exchange Server 2013 setup ISO. You can see that it has a drive letter D. So what we're going to do now is prepare our Active Directory. To do this, we're going to start PowerShell. We're going to go into D colon, and we're going to run this command. As you can see, I specified my organization name to be Kiwi Exchange, but you can of course choose whatever you'd like. After the setup is completed, we can see that we have one warning. This is basically telling us that after we install Exchange 2013, we will no longer be able to install Exchange 2010 servers. We are now ready to prepare the schema. And to do this, all we have to do is run another command. As you can see, this operation completed without any warnings. So now up for the final step, preparing the domain. It's also just another command. 
So, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that and run it. This step is also completed without any errors, so we're ready to proceed with the installation. We can close PowerShell for now. We're finally ready to start the Exchange Service setup. So, just go to the CD-ROM, or DVD-ROM it should be, and double click it. It will ask us to connect to Windows Update to download updates for the setup itself, which I would recommend, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. No updates were found, so we're gonna proceed. So files will be copied to the hard drive. And set up we start to initialize. So we get to the introduction, there's some information here. Microsoft Exchange is designed to help you increase your productivity. Well, sounds good to me. So we're gonna go ahead and proceed. Accept license terms, of course. We're gonna be see here, we're gonna, we're gonna use the recommend set at Exchange Server automatic check for us. Ah no, we're gonna go through the unrecommended settings, I think. We're gonna have the client and client access roles. Automatically installed rows and features. I think we've pretty much done that already, but why not? We're gonna install to the C drive. You can see it's gonna need 8 gigs just for the installation, so we're gonna click next. We won't be disabling malware scanning, sounds like something you might want to have. Um, and it's gonna perform a readiness check. So this is where we get to know if uh, all the steps we did uh, were correct or if I missed something. Looks like we're ready, so we're gonna go ahead and install. And after quite a long wait, the installation has finally completed. So we're just gonna go ahead and check the box to see if we can launch the administration center, and we're gonna finish it off. Looks like I have the Internet Explorer protected mode on, so we'll be getting some warnings here. Um, we can't run the scripts either, so I should probably fix that. Uh, I can show you how to do that real quickly. Just fire up the server manager, go to the local server, and select the IE Enhanced Security Configuration. And we're going to disable it for users and administrators. And what I will have to do is restart Internet Explorer. And if I'm not incorrect, I should be able to sign in with the administrator account. So enter Kiwi administrator and my password. No, don't remember my password. And we're into the Exchange Admin Center. And that concludes our first part on Exchange. We now have Exchange up and running, and in the next episode we'll be having a look at getting it to actually route some emails and getting some clients connected. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you run into any problems or have other comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe.